Rebuilding populations of predators requires an ecosystem-based approach. This means we need to protect an equally important but often overlooked group of sea animals, the forage fish. Also known as prey, these schools of tiny fish are vital to the ocean food web. After all, even the most fearsome predator cannot survive in the absence of its prey. In the U.S., the most important forage species include menhaden, squid, herring, sardines, and krill. In fact, were it not for the conservation efforts led by NCMC on behalf of menhaden, one of the greatest success stories in fish conservation could have had a very unhappy ending. Striped bass are really the aquatic equivalent of the American bald eagle. They're just an amazing fish, the fish that really enabled the pilgrims to survive their first winters off Cape Cod. Beautiful, big, you know, they can get as large as 100 pounds, just an amazing creature that uh, in the Chesapeake Bay, which is their main spawning area, they start there, then they migrate all along the Atlantic coast through the original 13 colonies, actually and uh, have long been a prized sport fish and commercial fish in the United States. In the 1970s, uh, there had been tremendous numbers of striped bass along the Atlantic coast, and there was a huge amount of overfishing going on. Mainly, they're, they're a prized species for, for restaurants and for supermarkets, and the price of striped bass was going up, 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 and everybody eventually had to bite the bullet to try to save them. In an effort to bring back this historic fish, NCMC hosted workshops, organized conferences, and successfully lobbied for the Federal Striped Bass Conservation Act, which took effect in 1984. After an enormous five-year endeavor that nearly shut down all recreational and commercial fisheries up and down the Atlantic seaboard, the striped bass population was declared recovered in 1995, proving that if you give the fish a break, they will come back. However, by the late 90s, another problem had emerged. The newly resurgent stripers in the Chesapeake Bay were skinny and diseased, likely due to insufficient quantities of their most important prey species, menhaden. The primary food that striped bass love to eat is the Atlantic menhaden. They're not edible in terms of humans, but striped bass love them because they've got a lot of oil and fat, and uh, they've long been their preferred uh, species. Menhaden are ground up into fish meal, for one thing, which is then fed to uh, poultry and, and hog farms along the, uh, the Chesapeake Bay, and also is used in aquaculture. The case of the striped bass revealed that in order to save a particular species, the predator-prey relationship must be taken into account. Basically, the striped bass are competing uh, with the industrial fisheries for the same food source. These 170 foot long factory vessels go out there into the Chesapeake and they let two boats go and the boats put out this uh, you know, 1500 foot long seine and they can take an entire school of menhaden in, in one set. Well, striped bass can't keep up with that. They, you know, striped bass school in large numbers but they can't compete and so therefore the striped bass are not getting enough to eat and they're starving and they're susceptible to this bacterial infection that's starting to kill them. The message was clear. Menhaden mattered. The NCMC launched a cooperative effort to prove how this small silvery fish was important not only to striped bass and other predators, but also to commercial and recreational fishermen from Atlantic coastal towns. An NCMC-led alliance successfully worked to obtain the first limits on the industry's catch of menhaden in the Chesapeake Bay. In addition, scientists initiated new research in order to implement an ecosystem-based approach that would protect the ecological role of menhaden and, as a result, restore the health of the striped bass population. These efforts confirm that single-species conservation is the wrong approach. With that in mind, NCMC put the spotlight on the little fish, launching the Forage First campaign in 2006. Forage species are critical because they have an important ecological role of uh, feeding on plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton, and they convert that into usable energy by becoming food themselves for large predators, uh, larger fish, sharks, billfish, tuna. Forage species are under increased demand because many are reduced into products, fish meal and fish oil, and globally these supplies are about tapped out. The largest consumer of fish meal and fish oil is the aquaculture industry, 
which currently uses more than half of the global supply and is projected to double its usage in the next decade. In addition, the most in-demand aquaculture species are the carnivorous fin fish, which require vast amounts of fish-based feed. For example, it takes more than 20 pounds of forage fish to raise one single pound of farmed tuna. We have got to start moving to ecosystem-based fishery management. We have got to stop managing each fish like it's isolated in the ocean in its own box and start looking at the connections, the critical connections between predator and prey and starting to balance those in our decision making. We can start setting our reference points um, with the goal to, to keep more forage in the water for predators. In order for us to continue our historic relationship with fish, we need to change the way we view the ocean and its most dominant denizens. For NCMC, the underlying motivation for conserving fish is simple. Fish are important. Not only are they a unique source of protein for millions of people throughout the world, they also create jobs in a variety of food and recreational industries, making them a critical player in the global economy and our way of life. Conservation is nothing more than a way of being able to pass along to my children what I was able to see as a child and as an adult. And I'm hoping through conservation to be able to pass along the same gift of being able to catch billfish along to my kids. The NCMC is probably the biggest and best leader in this attempt at conservation, not only within the United States, but in principles that will affect the entire world. So I believe in conservation as a gift to my children and to theirs. NCMC believes that the best weapon in the fight to conserve fish is an interested, informed, and involved public. NCMC's successes would not be possible without the generosity and support of its members. Join them in the fight. Log on to www.savethefish.org to become a member. Do it for the fish.